Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Carrie. This is Target Lily Designs. Welcome to floss tube number 48. Yay! Are you excited? We're regular. We're back for a regular floss tube Friday and I'm super excited about it because of stitch mist and all the 12 days that we've been doing. I hope you had fun. I've got so much on the table to share with you that I didn't share during stitch mist because I stayed on task, but that means we've got lots to cover because we've got like two weeks worth of stuff. But I was busy with stitch mist, so don't get overexcited. Um, but welcome if you're a new subscriber or a new check me out welcome my channel is mainly about cross stitch quilting knitting making all the things lots of fun to be had and then if you're a returning subscriber thanks so much for coming back i appreciate you so much all right friends so i do have a list and an agenda so let me run through like i like to do to tell you what's what what's coming just so you can prepare get your stitching get your beverage this one might be a long one my list took a whole full page so you just don't know how much i'm gonna chat 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 or if i'm gonna run through it quick because you know sometimes people tell me i talk fast funniest thing is my mother even told me that she had to go into the YouTube settings and slow down my reel because I was talking too fast. I love that. Sometimes it happens. I'm sorry. I, I, some, I talk really fast and I talk really loud when I get excited and I'm excited about all the things all the time. So anyway, let's talk about the recap. I got my handy dandy list. So we are going to do a little stitch miss recap just in case you're like found me for the first time. You're like, what is she talking about? I do want to tell you what stitch miss is so you can go back because you've got plenty of time and I don't want you to miss out. So a little stitch miss, 12 days of stitch miss recap. I've got whips galore. I've got a 12 days whip. I've got a what whips. We'll just leave it there. Lots of whips, stitchy whips. I've got a little fabulous stitchy kindness that came to me in mail a little bit ago, but it was wrapped in Christmas paper and I decided how fun would it be to unwrap it with you. So I'm excited to do that stitchy kindness. I've got knitting galore because remember I went down the knitting rabbit hole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that means I have updates on all the things that I have been doing with the needles. And then I'm going to talk about some plans. Actually, we're going to talk about plans for plans. And then last but not least is a Tiger Lily shop update. I've got a story for you. Some might be excited for it. Yesterday was a long day. Let's just leave it there. I'll tell you the story during the shop update, but let's dig in. Now, first, like I said, I want to talk about the 12 days of stitch miss because there's still time. Now, if you don't know, if you're new here, welcome. Um, but for December 1 through December 12th, I did daily videos. And during those videos, I featured two small businesses, also showed some new stitching finishes, lots of fun. There is a playlist. I will put a link right here as well as a link down in the description box where you can just go and binge watch the whole playlist. They're about 20, 30 minutes each. There's 12 videos. It's like a marathon movie of Carrie. Are you excited? I don't know. But the exciting part, I think, well, lots of exciting parts, lots of things, lots of, new, lots of new small businesses. Hopefully you found one, two, 12, 24 that you love, that you've hearted, that you've saved, that you've bought from. Lots of things. But um, there were daily videos. It was 12 days of daily giveaways too, which is so exciting. And so the cool thing is, like that's why I'm that's why I'm telling you during floss tube just in case make sure that you have gone and entered every day there was a word of the day and you could enter in there was two daily prizes for each video and so you need to win them like I want you to enter to win because I'm excited and as well as you're going to take that word of the day and put it in your this is the last time I'm going to talk about it I promise this is the grand prize crossword puzzle you guys had so much fun with it last year during flossmas so i made another one and remember if you go and enter the word of the day from each of the 12 videos and you take a picture and you send it to me in an email then you're entered for the grand prize and there's two grand prizes there's a stitching grand prize which means it's all cross stitch accoutrement whether it's patterns notions i don't remember all the things I told you every day what I was putting in the grand prize box. And then there's also a knitting or crochet or, you know, a yarn grand prize box. So make sure, please, when you email me your grand prize crossword puzzle picture, I will enter you into stitch, knit, 
or both, I really, really, really need you to tell me in the email which ones you want to be entered into because I want you to win what you want to win. Now, if you want to do both and you are a multi-crafter like me, awesome sauce. Like, we're entering you in both. But if you're like, don't touch the cross stitch or I don't touch the knitting. And if you don't have a mom or a sister or a friend that you maybe want to win for instead, totally fine. I just want the grand prizes to go to somebody who's going to love and use all the things in them. So again, you've got until the 24th. So a, a while. I don't know what today. Today's the 16th. So you've got eight days left to enter into all the daily window, all the daily videos entries, as well as the grand prize. So you need to make sure that you email me your crossword puzzle by the morning of the 24th because I don't know exactly when I'm going to pull it, but that's the cutoff that I made. So that way, when I do sit down at the computer and run all the things, I've got all my entries right there in front of me and we're going to have so much fun and I can't wait to pull all the winners. That's my favorite part. Lots of my favorite parts. I love all the things, but just giving things away is so fun. Okay. That's the Stitch Miss recap. Like I said, hopefully you've watched the 12 videos. If not, you've got plenty of time. We've got a whole weekend. Just, you know, stitch and binge and have some fun for you. All right, so let's dig into some whips. Should I start with the, the, the start and finish all in one? Because it's fun? I think I should. So during this, like I said, I've been away for two weeks. Two weeks from Floss for Doop. I've been on the YouTube doing all this dish mess. But I've been away from normal Floss Tube Fridays for two weeks. Three weeks. It's been a hot minute. So during that time, there was the Jingle Ball. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the details of the Jingle Ball because 27 other people, 100 people, have told you all about the Jingle Ball and how, how all the fun it was and all the things. And yay, so fun. I didn't have as much because I was knee deep in Stitch Miss. Um, I didn't get to get into the stitching rooms, my calendar, my time, it just didn't line up with me. And I'm super sad about it because it sounds like it was so much fun and totally my jam to just sit there on camera and chat with stitchy people. Like, are you kidding? I was kind of bummed when I saw all the fun that was being had, had a little bit of FOMO, but I'm okay with it. I, I'm super excited about next year that it's coming back. And of course, I went to the exclusive shop and bought all the things. That's, I mean, there were lots of things, but I did that for sure. Um, so I got the ornament book. I got some other charts, some exclusive charts, because, you know, exclusive, that's like, you know, the big bullseye must buy now. Um, the one that spoke to me immediately, and then I was like, okay, kit it up, do the twist. Now, where the chart is? I don't know. I bought them all as PDF because I wanted instant gratification or I wanted into instant kit it up. I didn't want to wait for the mail to bring me these things. Although the books, the actually the hard copy ornament books look really cute. But that's okay. I ordered the hands-on design tree lot. Now I know you've seen it. If you've been around, you've seen it. It's adorable. And Shelby and I actually talked about it because she's got this super cute board finish that she made. That is adorable. So if you wanted to actually make them like a tree lot where they're standing up on the tabletops, so adorable. Like a wood backer, I love it so much. Unfortunately, with with much chagrin, I determined that my tabletop space in my home is at a premium. Meaning I don't have any more tabletops that I can put stitching on. What I do have is a new tree coming. So, meaning next year. So, this year, I have two trees in my home. I have my regular family room tree with all the fun things, the things that I made when the, the kids were little, and all the fun vacation, all the, that one. And, of course, there's the Clemson tree. If you saw during Flossmas of 2021, the Clemson tree was in the backdrop the entire month. So fun. It's a white tree with orange and purple explosion. Yes, I have 300 tiger Clemson-themed ornaments. That's an exaggeration, but I do love my Clemson tree. But this year I've decided since I might be up to 25 stitchy ornaments that next year I'm getting a new tree. Yay for me. So I'm waiting for the after Christmas sale. Hopefully I'm going to try to get a fun little pencil tree. Um, spoiler alert. It'll probably be the backdrop of Stitch Miss, Last Vlog Miss, Hollow Vlogs, whatever I'm calling the 2023 fun that we have in December, that tree will probably be behind me and I'm so excited for it. Um, but so 
I decided since I'm gonna have an ornament tree, a stitching ornament tree for me, and um, side note, so I was showing them to Lily, she's home, yay, love when my college kids come home for a holiday break, she's sleeping, so that's why I can record here in the middle of, you know, 9 a.m. on a Friday, yeah, college students sleeping. So, um, I was showing them to her, showing her all the pieces, and I said, you know, there's these 12 days, there, and right now I'm doing two, although I've already bought two more, but right now, I've started two 12 days of Christmas series. Now, if you saw, I've got the um, Vivsters one where I've got four done. And then I have my new Santa one. Of course, I didn't bring any of those here to show you. Um, but they're all during Stitch Mints. So go back and stitch, go back and watch them. But um, I also have the Prairie Schooler 12 Days of Santas, 12 Days of Christmas Santas, which I'm kind of addicted to because of the bright colors that I changed them to in the RFL conversion I did love it so i showed lily i was like so maybe one day when you're a grown-up because i've got two kids Noah and lily right and so i was like maybe one day you know i can gift one 12 day set to you and one 12 day set to noah since he's not here yet because he's decided that coming home quickly clemson's too much fun so no need to rush home i don't take it personal um that you're here you get to choose which one do you want so here's the four and here's this one. She chose the prairie schooler one because the Santa is adorable. So that's why I can light a little fire under my rear end to actually like get those things done. I mean, she's, you know, 17. So I got time before she has her own home and her own tree. But I'm super excited. Like, I love the plan of it all. Moral of the story is, holy tangent, I haven't even shown you any stitching. Let's show you some stitching, shall we? Ah! So because I decided that... Tabletop space was at a premium in my home and I'm not gonna buy more tables just to put stuff on. I can make some ornaments. And as you know, I'm addicted and it's right here to my cord maker drill. Don't know what this is. Also talked about during Stitch Miss. Don't remember what day, but this is magical. So I have made the hands on design tree lot. This is the first one. Ah, of course. Okay, so this is like Tiger Lily theme Christmas, like bright, fun, in your face. So if you will notice, these are not the colorful colors, obviously. These are a Tiger Lily twist, totally different. Um, concep conceptually, maybe some of them are the same. There's a red and a pink. I think there's definitely like a red and a pink shade in them. Like I said, I wish I had the chart to show you, but, um, and then there's two shades of green. Cool. Yeah. That sounds about right. This white, obviously first, first change, I put it on pink fabric. Welcome. Carrie loves pink. Um, so I put it on pink fabric because it's fun. And so then I changed some, uh, some of the colors and you'll see the tealy blue because that's on, it's more prim and more classic and more muted, more like this, black streety kind of, black, black birdie type of, black streety wet. And so um, these blues, these two shades of turquoise were actually two shades of brown charted for in the, let's look really great when you're stitching on brown fabric, like it all meshes together, but in the world of bright and in your face, tiger lily, I needed aqua. So this is my finish and I love it. It, does, it is missing one thing. Don't worry. You're like, Carrie, okay, the point is a little like in your face. Yes, I know. Now, remember, this is my, I'm addicted to making cord cord. So this is what this is. I will do a video because you guys have asked, some of you have asked and, and I'm going to just show you because why not? So this is four strands because it's a nice, thick, chunky. I like to see it when I'm holding it. Um, four strands of each color. You, you use a whole skein of DMC. It depends on the measurements of what you're cording. But for this length of cord to get, there was a little bit left. Um, you need the full skein of DMC in this hot pink color and this aqua color. And if you look real close, and I don't even think, oh, yes. See? See that little extra, that light one? And you can see there's a light pink. Okay, that is because I pulled these colors from a kit that I have now decided to, uh, from a whip that I've unwhipped. And so I had used a little bit of that skein for this stitch. And so I didn't have a full four because you need two yards of each. So I did two yards 
Here's some math for you. Two yards times four, eight yards. That's how many yards are in an, a full skein of DMC. Well, I didn't have eight yards because I'd used a little bit of that color on the stitch that I have now taken, since taken apart. So what I did, rather than, of course I didn't realize it till I'd already pulled out three and cut them and all the things. I said, well, you know, like that doesn't bother me. I went and grabbed a color that was close enough. You know, light, a little bit lighter, as you can see. You can see there, so there's one string of a light pink and one string of an aqua pink. So if you don't have a full skein to make the cord, but you wanna make a four strand chunky cord, don't fret. You know, if it's super color, like there's two shades of pink, there's pink fabric, there's two aquas, it all works. Did you notice it until I showed it, told you about it? No, you did not. Um, so, you know, work with what you got. You do not have to go out and buy a full skein just to make cord. Like, raid your stash, raid your stash. Okay, so what I'm telling you though, I feel like this is going to be the queen of tangents episode <laughs> because I've got so many things to tell you. Um, was right here, it is not here yet, it is coming. My sweet friend Sarah has sourced us these adorable star buttons. I don't remember. She told me. I will tell you next time. She told me where she got them. It was one of the big box stores. I don't want to tell you which one is and be wrong, but it was one of them and it was perfect. Like it was the size, I think it's the size of between a dime and a quarter, maybe a nickel size. Cute little white star button. And of course, you know, because I've got my white thread, it'll look so, it's going to finish it off perfect. So this is my start finish. I stitched this in one night. Pretty excited. Now it was a long night because I was waiting for the Lily to come on the train. And of course the train was late again. But hey, that's okay. I got more stitching time in. So that is my start and my finish. Yay. That's fun. So let's just dig into the lip whips. Woo. Like I said, I'm already chatty chatty. So remember, it's the 12 days of Christmas. So yes, I have pulled this out because it's the 12 days of Christmas. And so although we're starting our sal in next year, I still tried to get a little bit of fill in. So cute. This is four birds. So day four, I forget what the four thing is, but I love the birds. I've talked about it is, you know, there's the special video, there's all the things, but this is four working on the fill in. Remember mine is a full tiger lily twist color conversion to Miss Sadis silks. Miss Sadis is a hand dye floss dyer from Spain that I found two years ago, maybe. I got our full collection, charted this up, did a conversion, all the things. I will be doing a blog because I've had a lot of people ask me. Um, I will be, it's on the list, to tell you my color conversions and all the things, but I gave that a little bit of love this week, so that is super fun. What else did I pull out this week? Didn't even get into a project bag yet. I'm working on it, I'm working. Only so many hours in the day. So this, of course, I started this one here recently. Um, if you don't know, I live less than a mile away from the actual Mount Vernon mansion of George Washington, right down the street. So this was perfect for me to have in my home. So I'm deciding on whether this is going to be an ornament because, you know, kind of addicted to the ornaments. Can you tell? Or whether I'm going to, I do have one like dough bowl pillow situation going. So this might be too big. For, whoo, might be too big. But so right now you can see so cute love it so i definitely this is great fill in i need to do the other tree let me just show you right here so you know the mansion fill in snowman a little bit this, this one's gonna be a bit because that's that's a big white house what am i stitching this on so let me pull out my project information card mount Vernon christmas i'm stitching this on 18 count lfa boston t um, I'm not using any of the called for. I'm using used brick, bayberry, and the parchment. Um, the White House I'm using the silks for you snow white that I have. So 18 count, so one strand on Ada. Welcome, I'm an Ada stitcher. And there's my floss, super fancy. Not so much, but this isn't, I keep it in this because it's a small little travel project. It's a great fill in, is travel jam. So I love to just have this little handy thing that I can throw right into my purse. Speaking of throwing into my purse, let's dig into this project keeper because this is also, this is one of my vintage stitching ones. 
me and my friend, my friend and I's Rachel from Treehouse Fiber Arts. We are Project Keeper Twinsies on this one. This is one that I just could not give up. I love that tree stitching. Um, so this is mine, but what I put in here is so exciting. So the, the reason I love, I love my Project Keepers for lots of reasons, but I love a good, like small travel project, right? This is great. It's all one, like throw it in your purse, throw it in your bag. It's ready to go. But sometimes, which is what I was doing with this one. Have you remember this guy? He's so cute. He's the little Satsuma Street tree topper Santa ornament thing. So I started this one. I love this story. This is one of those things where, you know, I will remember this for the rest of my life. And, and that's what's exciting about it. Well, lots of things are exciting about it. But so I, I used one of my Tiger Lily Pride Tracker cards, put post, um, post it hole punches in here because that's where these kits come with just a bundled hot mess of thread and to keep them all straight and colored and organized I just hole punched my project information card obviously I'm using called for so I'm not using any of these boxes but it just gives me the information so I started this look July 10th 2022 you know where I was orientation with Lily at UVA so cute okay so um that's a fantastic memory I'm sitting at UVA doing the parents weekend she's over there doing the kids stuff kid stuff college student stuff and so close so I've got why is the thread oh because I need that for the beading but this all the stitching's done yay so we finished all the stitching this week and I love it so much and then so now it's time for beads right if you remember I've never done the beads like that's kind of scary so we talk it's not scary I'm excited I love a new challenge but so there's a bag of beads beads and sequins love sequins okay so we talked about it and I had got myself as you can tell I haven't used it yet a tucky bill it's an adhesive bead board that I got from my local in stitches shop simply scatter a few beads onto the tacky bead board and pick one up with your needle the tacky surface keeps the beads from rolling away so here I was, and I was stitching on this in this cute little kit, right? I pulled it out of my purse, brought it over to my stitching a couple nights, finished the stitching. And then I was like, okay, now I'm ready to do the beads. I don't know where that bead tacky CD box is. So the moral of the story is what I've decided now is, because I love those things. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera. I decided this is now my beaded ornament project keeper yes uh-huh so this is gonna be a little combination whip slash fun slash haul in the world of ornaments so mm -hmm. so this is my current one this is the bobby thing that i just found this morning um to put in here so now i can get to the beading although i do have to decide do i need a special needle or can i just use the needle that i i don't know so we'll see if i'm beading tonight or not but What's on this side? All the things. So that way I can keep them all together and I can pick which one I want to do next. Now, some of these, these gym shore ones were haul from a couple months in the spring. I don't remember. It was a haul from when I went to my local shop, but it's always fun. They are Christmas. So let's look at them one more time. This is the so cute. What is this called? Santa with lights. This is the Mill Hill. And you can see, this is how the floss comes. Hot Mess Express, right? So the, my little hole punch with, so you can use the project information cards, obviously, or tracker cards. Um, or you, like Christmas cards, you get Christmas cards. Save them, perfect. The, they're hard card stock things. Use those as your floss cards. And then on the back, you can just label like red. It tells you what the DMC are. The floss numbers, now, of course, nothing's labeled, so you have to know that 321 is red, which, you know, we know. But besides that, I'm not too knowledgeable. But anyway, you can figure that out and organize it so you don't have this ball of floss in your bag all the time. So this is a cute one. Did I show you that already? No. Um, sorry, I'm not taking them on the package because that's crazy. It'll, all the package and the crinkling and the stuff. And this one's called Winter Wishes Santa. So adorable, again. Hot Mess Express, but use those Christmas cards. I'm excited, so maybe I'll have to save some of those um, that have started to come. But the, the new ones, this new haul, 
this just came in because I saw this on Satsuma. I don't remember. Sometime between floss, last floss tube and this floss tube, I went down this rabbit hole. And um, remember when I was talking about I might be starting a new one of the 12 days of Christmas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is one of them. Satsuma's got at least two. I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming she's going to do 12. I've got time. But here's the partridge in a pear tree as well as two turtle doves. Adorable. Okay, can you see why I'm drawn to these? Can you see the colors? Does it just scream Tiger Lily to you? Yes. Now, this is one from last year, I think. This cute little Jolly Santa, what's he called? Candy Claws. Oh, my goodness. So cute. This one is this year. Mary Pear. So adorable. Love, love, love them. So, I'm going to put all of these in this fancy it's not fancy in this handy dandy project keeper and that way now i know and i'll have my beading box all together and if i want to start one of these before i finish this one that's okay it's all right here together and this is my beading stitchy ornament project keeper so excited yay all right that's my whips i got one more whip for you woohoo all right friends so if you saw during Stitchmas, I also introduced you, believe day one, day two, pretty early on, I introduced you to the world of Needlepoint. Now, maybe I didn't introduce you to it. Maybe you already know all the things. Totally new to me, and I'm super excited. The company was called That Salty Stitch. So again, I've recruited, this is my, <laughs> I don't have a problem, but I did give myself permission to keep two Christmas vintage stitching keepers this year for myself. So one of you lucky people out there are project keeper twins with me. There's two of these, the angels. I love them so much. This, this one's mine. And this I've decided I have coined this one now ah, as my needle point keeper. Cause I'm a goober really. Do you love it? Okay. So I'm trying because I'm not gonna go down the multiple whip. It has to fit in the project keeper. <laughs> I can't have more projects and fit in the project keeper. But really, I could fit like five or six projects in the keeper. Not that anybody's counting. But that's what that's the that's the threshold, the rules I'm giving myself. But let's just stay on task, shall we? So right now, I have in here three projects. One I've started. So I've shown you guys this one. This was the little orange tree. This one in here, you can see just, so this is another 12 days of Christmas. This is the needle point. Let's see if I can. And I went to, so the problem is I'm learning still. So I went to Michael's and I got floss for it, but I got the wrong size. So all of this pearl cotton thread based on the mesh count is not the right size. So I'm learning. Um, I don't really know DMC pearl cotton. Like I'm not an expert yet. Not an expert at anything really, but I'm certainly not an expert at DMC pearl cotton. But what I have learned is that the one I'm stitching now is a tighter mesh. I think it's an 18 count. It's very similar to Ada. It's an 18 count mesh, I think. And then um, I also have two, what I believe to be 14 count mesh. Now the 14 count mesh, that came kitted to me during Stitch Miss came with these pearl cottons. And these pearl cottons, cottons, what am I saying? Are called, are 3L. I don't know what that means, but visually looking at them, I can tell you what it means. So this is the one I got at the store for my partridge in a pear tree. It's the same mesh, it's 14 count. So I wasn't paying attention. But this one's called 5M. And this one's called 3L. No idea what any of those codes mean. If you do, let me know. But what I do know is this one's thicker than this one. It's kind of like this is one strand and this is two strands, although they're all one strand. So it's just ply. Here we're getting into the yarn and the weaving and the, and the spinning and the things. But all I can tell you is that this one that's called 5M is thinner density than the 3L. So when you want to stitch with on 14 count, I'm guessing you need the 3Ls and the 18 count, you need the 5Ms. I didn't realize there was a difference until I came home from my Michaels and thought, 
Well, this is the one that she, huh. So I will have to go back to the store and pull the colors again for my new little, let's see if I can show you with that all fine. This partridge in a pear tree needle point, so adorable. Okay, but so obviously that's not a whip, people. That's just like more things in my thing. But this is the whip side. This is the side I'm working on. So yes, I have, I learned my lesson. When you take pearl cotton off the skein, it's not so much like DMC. You can't pull it out like the number, you know, like sometimes when you use a DMC, if you pull it out by the number point, it doesn't become a hot tangled mess. That is not what happens to pearl cotton. They become a hot tangled mess. Here's my proof. Right here is my hot tangled mess. This is the color I started with. Lesson learned. So what I did is I did what I do with my cross stitch floss. So right or wrong, this is what I did. And I floss dropped it nice 18 inch strands so it's not super unmanageable but easy enough so i open up the skein floss i opened up the pearl cotton did a nice cut did the floss drop easy peasy now it's not a hot tank of mess so this is my whip how cute is that so you can see i've done all the purple i've done the white kc and i'm working on the orange i just started that this morning super sweet so this measures approximately like three inches in the circle so i don't know if i'm gonna make it into an ornament because you know ornaments or because this is a monogram it might be super cute for me to make something put it into some kind of duda accoutrement something for me to use because that's super fun look at the back it's so different than cross stitch Anyway, that's my needlepoint fun, and I will link that Salty Stitch down below. It's a cute little Etsy shop, um, and she's got an Instagram page. Super sweet. If you want to try, it's a great way to try needlepoint. I, like I said, I told you all about her during Stitch Mess. But I'm super excited. I'm going to have to go get the fives or threes or whatever I got to go get to because I wanted to start that tree. And then I realized, oopsie daisy, wrong size. Yay. Okay, friends, that, oh, pickles, I've lost my list. Found it. Woo we would have just gone off the tracks there, off the rails. All right, so, dismiss recap, whips, yay. All right, let's do, well, we're going to stay on Stitchy. This is a Stitchy Kindness. This is from my friend, Caroline, she sent me, okay, love this so much. So this is sign language wrapping paper. So sweet. Merry Christmas. I'm so excited. She just sent it to me. I haven't watched it yet, but she is a sweet, stitchy friend on Instagram and here on YouTube that has found me and she is deaf. So she speaks sign language and she has told me that I have my, she made an own sign for me. So my own like signing name. I'm, first of all, blown away, and I can't wait to see what it is. I can't, it's so fun. So she sent me this, and I was like, okay, let's, let's open this. Oh, I love that. Love, love, love. So she said she saw this, and she's like, this is, it made me think of you, and that you would need it, and all the things. So let's see what it is. Sorry for the crinkling. Double paper. Fancy. All right. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at this vintage stitching. Can you even? The French horn. Okay, so now I remember she was talking to me about, you know, because she's deaf, she can't hear the music, but she can feel it and she can, uh, she, through the sign interpreter of the music, she just knows that it, music just makes you happy. I love this so much. French horns. I don't know how many French horns are on here. One, two, I feel like there's a few. Oh my goodness. So I will definitely add this to my vintage stitching collection and we will make these into some wonderful keepers for next year to share. I will obviously have to send her one 
as a thank you for sharing with me as well as keep one myself so we can be little project keeper twinsies and then there'll be a few for you but that's for next year thank you so much caroline i love it so much i can't wait to save the stitches and make some gorgeous project keepers with that okay that's my stitchy kindness so i do want to tell you before i switch gears to the knitting in case that's not your jam um next week it's a little crazy next week, right? Um, my hope, my plan is to plan. Woohoo! So what does that mean? That means next week I'm going to sit down and think about the plans of 2023. Not the world of Tiger Lily and the business associated with all that. That's coming later. But my stitching plans. What do I want to stitch? What is my goals? What are the things? You know, there's lots of opportunities to do whip go, I, which I'm toying with. The ideas of whip go, stitch your stash. Yeah, I know my friend Jessica from Sweetwater Stitcher is doing like a stitch from your stash, which is super fun. Um, I could totally do that. Might have to stash up a little bit between now and the first of the year just to make sure I got everything, but I could totally do that. But I'm thinking that I'm going to do my own little twist on it and do like a combo, shocker, I'm going to make something up and do a little combo this, that, and the other thing. So I'm going to think about it. Next week, I'm hoping to share with you all my plans. So it might be fun. Maybe you want to join me. Maybe you want to do a little Tiger Lily twist planning 2023. Hey, it's just fun because really you enable me. I enable you. We sing Kumbaya. It's fun, fun, fun. All right, friends. So that's the stitching. So now I'm going to switch to knitting. So if you're not here for the knitting, but you want a Tiger Lily shop update, you need to fast forward to sm smidge to get a little bit of the update. But otherwise, stick around because I've got some fun, yummy, mm, yummy yarn. All right, friends. Let's start with, we're going to start with the biggest because it's fun. Now, if you've been around for a while, you know what this is. You know what's in here. Do you remember? Do you remember? <sighs> okay. So I'm going to pause and come back. <sighs> Aren't you excited? Look, almost have a sleeve. Don't have a sleeve. But I do have a finished body. Look. I'm loving it so much. Okay, first of all, love the body stitching because it was just straight, go across the way. I'm kind of in love with this yarn and the finish and all the things. I wish I could back up more so you could see. Obviously, when I do finish it, I will take some photos of it far away, but it's, I mean, it's not so close. I only have one sleeve <gasps> and I don't even have a full sleeve. I definitely have some, some sleeving to go. I'm doing the magic loop with the sleeve rather than double pointed needles. It's not my favorite. Maybe it's cause I just gotta like practice more, but I definitely enjoyed the, the stitching at the body. It was just straight knit, 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 or stockinette stitch. So knit, pearl, knit, pearl. So love it. Love it so much. And I love it so much that what has it done? It has made me, now let's see if I can do this without so it looked kind of funny, but that's okay. Um, it has made me start planning, thinking in true whip fashion. If you're a multi-crafter, you start planning your next project before you finish your new one, right? Or your current one. You, I'm not the only one, right? Yeah. No. Okay, good. So what I have done is, so I've done this cardigan. This is the Tin Can Knits Harvest Cardigan. Perfect. First time cardigan knitter. There's lots of YouTube tutorials that I'm using to like, just remind me what does slip slip stitch mean? Or, you know, I'm learning all the things. First time sweater, like, but loved it. So I was like, okay, now I need a sweater. Cardigan, now I need a sweater. So I bought this pattern. This is from Jesse May Martinson of Jesse Made Designs. Cozy Classic Raglan. It's definitely earmarked and tagged as an easy sweater. So it's a top-down sweater, learning all the lingo. So I knew immediately that I wanted to use my Junie and Sai. I pronounced them wrong during Stitch Miss. I'm so sorry. It's Sai, short for Silas, not C, like, yes, in Spanish. Junie and Sai. This is a featured yarn that I got during Stitch Miss, and I told you, I do believe, that I loved it so much, I went ahead and I bought myself a couple more skeins of it because I knew it needed to be a sweater in my life. 
but this is fingering weight, right? So, and this is not a fingering weight. What she does with this sweater is it's held fingering and mohair. Well, I talked to my knitting friends, Rachel, and I was like, okay, mohair. She's like, well, so you either are team mohair or you're not team mohair. And I'm not quite sure that you want to start with a sweater to determine your mohair love or hate, either one. And she was right because this is a big time and money investment. And I certainly didn't want to become team not mohair with a sweater. So instead, I went to my local LNS, which is not what it's called, my local wire, my local yarn shop here in Old Town, Alexandria. And I was like, okay, so in the non-mohair, but in the lace weight, the skinny, what, what do you have? So it's the same weight as mohair. Doesn't have the halo, doesn't have the fluff. I got this. This is Marina Manos del Ur Uruguay, hot pink. So my thought was I'm gonna hold these two together and that's gonna give me gauge, right? Okay, so, mm -hmm. got myself a ball winder. I'm gonna show it to you later. So these are them too. This is the, their ball wound. <laughs> and this is my blocked gauge swatch. So many things to show you. I love it so much. I love it so much, but it's not on gauge. So what that means, in case you, you know, in case you're new to knitting like me, is this will tell you that the, the gauge for this needs to be 18 stitches per four by per four by four. 18 stitches. So usually the width is what matters. The length you can, you know, kind of play with a little bit. Just make it longer. Um, at least with this sweater. So I think. So I know. I don't know. But 18 stitches, the width matters because you want the sweater, to, it's a garment, you want it to fit. Well, my gauge is wrong. I don't remember, I, I gauge measured this a while ago. I think it's too tight. So I either have to go up a needle size or I have to get a different yarn, meaning this pink is just not thick enough to give me gauge with this one. So there's three components. This is what I've learned. There's three components to make making gauge. And listen, if you're a knitter, you're like, Seriously, this is like knitting 101, Carrie. Yeah, well, so 101, welcome, learn with me. Three components, the yarn, the needle, and you. Magic. Those are the three things that can change gauge. The thickness of your yarn, right? The needle size you use, whether it's, you know, one to 15, or, and you meaning how tight or how loose you personally stitch, knit. So that's what I'm learning. That's the fun. This, so this is not gonna be a sweater right now. I'm gonna have to do something different. And so I, I gauged in the round. That's why there's these little fringes on the side. Learned that that was important. If you're going to knit in the round, you should gauge in the round. Anyway, so that's my fun little knitting adventure. We'll give you updates sometime, hopefully. I will have another sleeve one day when I grow up. And then last but not least, I also, while I was at my local yarn shop, this is a gorgeous evergreen yarn. Hold on. During Flossmas, I shared with you Evergreen Yarn Studio. So this is their Galaxy Evergreen Worsted. Super gorgeous. So what I do is I tie, these are the things, so when I ball wind them, these are the ones that are wrapped around it. So that way later on when I go to remember, like I know what's what. So I've tied some of those on here so that I could remember what's what. Um, so this is the one that Lily picked out when that, when that shipment came in from Miss Bridget. So beautiful, all the yarns. Lily, my Lily, picked this out and said, okay, this is the one I like. This is the one I want to have in. Well, awesome. So I, I did a little swatch trying to figure out the gauge and the hat and all the things. And I decided that I wanted to do a marled colorway rather than just this which is beautiful. I wanted to make it a little more marled versus just straight variegated yarn. So while I was at my yarn shop, I this is worsted weight, and then this is fingering. Ah. I didn't get that. Could you try again? 
I watch things, I'm talking to her. This is fingering perennial, this superwash and 60% merino and 25% alpaca and some nylon. So it's a gorgeous, lightweight fingering, I do believe. Super fine fingering. Yes. So I got this in the silver colorway because I thought it played lovely with this to create this gorgeous marled. So, so this is what marled is. Again, we're having a little more one-on-one -on -one, in case you don't know. So if I had just stitched straight with this, it would have been, there would have been some black. There would have been some teal. There would have been some white. There would have been some this. There would have been, so it was very, I'm not gonna say harsh color changes, but strong color changes, which is gorgeous if that's the effect you wanted. But I wanted them to to mute them down a little bit and to make them so they just kind of blend together. And I'm loving how this is looking so much. So like I said, this is the worsted weight held with the fingering weight. So it is a two strand. I'm using nine needles, I think. I kind of made up my own. I did a little gauge swatch. I did a little math, like knitting math. Okay, so if you don't know, my day job involves numbers like number crunching finance, all the things that are numbers. And so I'm kind of a number geek too. And so when I learned, which is why I think I'm drawn to quilting because all the cutting and the math and associated with the, anyway. So when I learned that there was math involved with calculating knitting, it kind of blew my mind. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to dive into the math hole yet because I don't know if it works because I'm only, you know, an inch and a half into the brim of the hat. But this pattern, this size, this cast on, this, this holding this with that and the weight and the yarn and the needles and all the math associated with this is all tiger lily math. Now, I don't know if it's going to be right. Certainly can't test putting it on my head now. It'll obviously stretch all the things, but I'm kind of geeking out on the fact that it might be cool. Maybe. If not, I'll pull it out and do it again. That's the cool thing about yarn. I think I have pulled this out three or four times. So it's okay. It's all the learning. But right now I'm loving the fabric that these two yarns are making together. I'm so excited about the possibilities of throwing a fingering solid. So I did get a couple yards, it's a couple skeins of the gray couple skeins of the ivory like a white ivory snow whitey to be a neutral to be the what I'm holding holding with so if you, you hold a fingering excuse me if you hold a fingering with the fingering it makes a worsted weight which is totally what this sweater is this is just worsted weight so um do you see and I don't want to stitch the same thing but I could totally like hold a single fingering and all those fingerings like multi, like, do you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just telling you that the colors of the yarn and the rabbit holes and all the things, it's only going to get better. I'm so excited. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to take this off because it's fun. All right, friends. So that is my knitting. I do believe. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's my knitting. So last but not least, here we are in the Tiger Lily shop update. Okay. So I've got some good news. And I've got some bad news or sad news or frustrating news. I don't know. If you saw yesterday, if you happen to catch the hours between, I don't know, 8.30 and 9.30 in the morning on Thursday morning, the 15th. Yeah. Now, if you didn't know, I did not have a keeper release on the 15th, December 15th. You did not miss it because I didn't have one. Um, I tried to tell you that a couple different times during floss tube. I just knew I wasn't going to have the bandwidth or the capacity to make keepers to sell on the 15th because of stitch miss and all that it was. So I had planned for the December 15th to be the launch, to be the, are you excited? The quarterly keeper club. Now I'm not going to go into all the details of the keeper club because I have a full 20 minute video explaining them all and I'm super excited. And so that's what I'm telling you. If you saw between like 8.30 and 9.30 yesterday morning, that video was up and live. And there's about two or 300 people that caught it before I had to take it back down. 
And during that about 45 minute time frame, we sold between 12 and 16 people signed up. So excited. I'm excited that you're excited. But the website, it didn't work. The nature of the beast. You know, when I do not speak web, I do not, my, my son's going to school for computer science, but that didn't help me. And I've got a website development team and we tested it thoroughly. Like we, te like we tested this subscription product. We had it tested, the bugs and the kinks and it all worked out. But then when push came to shove and the lunch came, you know what hit the fan? It was a bad day yesterday, friends. <laughs> I was so, it made me sick for you. For the people that, that it affected, I'm sick for you. Um, I wish I could undo. I wish I could crystal ball and take it all back. I wish like, but the moral of the story is we're getting, we're working on it. We're working the, the kinks out of the system. We've got plenty of time. The Project Keeper Club doesn't launch, doesn't ship. The first installment doesn't ship until January 25th, 2023. So we've got a little bit of time. I do want to fill the slot spots. I do want to figure out how many I'm making pl with plenty of time to make said keepers, to order said stitching goodies that are going with the keepers because it's a box. It's a, again, I'm not going to tell you all the details because I want you to get excited one day. I'm not going to launch the video again until the website works. It's Friday. Unfortunately, I don't hold out hope that it's going to be live and working today because they spent all day yesterday trying to work it out and, and we don't have it. And here it is 10 o'clock on Friday and I haven't heard an update yet. And of course, you know, nobody works on the weekends, but, but me really. And so, um, I'm not optimistic that I can launch the product today or tomorrow, but what I can tell you is that there's plenty of time. There are still slots, but what you can do, if you are excited, just if you've been waiting for the keeper and you don't want to miss now, I am, when I do launch it, it's not a, you better be there when I launch it or you're going to miss it type of situation. It is not like that. I'm going to leave it open for a certain period of time. Now, depending on the demand, depending on the excitement, depending on all that, I don't know if it's going to be open for a day or seven. I don't know because at some point I will have to, at some quantity, I don't know what quantity yet. I haven't quite wrapped my head around the quantity yet because all the keepers are made with these two hands and there's only so many hours in the day. And so you're not going to miss out if you want to get into the keeper club. I can promise you that. But what the best way to ensure that, you know, within, you know, minutes of the site actually working is for you to get on the email list. What does that mean? So right now, if you go to my website, it's tigerlilyshop.com. Once you go right to that website, immediately when you get there, a pop-up will come up and that will say, the Keeper Club is closed right now or it's unavailable. The gremlins have attacked the website, which is totally true. But if you're excited about the Keeper Club and you want to be notified when this silly, silly site actually works and technology doesn't make my life crazy, put your email right here in the box. That is the best way. Once you put your email in the box, I will be sending an email personally to those people that sign up that put their email in the box to be notified when the keeper goes live. So those are the people I'm going to tell first. I'm going to tell you whenever my team, it's not even a team. It's like, a guy. anyway, listen, it's me wearing all the 27 hats. When I know it works or when I think with 99% certainty, which is honestly where I was yesterday morning at 8.30. So it's super frustrating. But alas, when I know it works and I'm launching it again, crossing my fingers and my toes and doing the please goodness gracious work dance, I will email you and you will be first to know. At some point, 
later on that day, then I will relaunch the video. Then I will put a post on social media. Then I will let everybody else know. So I will open the gates to everyone. But the best way for you to be notified as to when the keeper information goes live is to put your email in the pop-up box that comes up on my website. Or, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the best way. Or you can just wait and see it. Make, if, if you want to just subscribe to YouTube, hit the bell. Make sure you've got the bell's notifications on your subscription to Tiger Lily. And so then it will notify you when a new video comes. And the next video, please, goodness, the next video that comes from me besides today will be this introducing the Project Keeper video. I hope that's the one that comes next. And I hope it's sooner rather than later, friends. Okay, sorry, didn't mean to be a Debbie Downer on the whole Tiger Lily Shop update because I'm super excited about it. Like, I wish I could, I'm not gonna do the 20 minute video here, but it's so exciting. Like, it, I've been planning it for, I don't even know how long, and I'm so excited, and I'm doing it, I'm so, I'm, I think you're gonna be excited, I think. I don't know. Friends, that is Floss Tube Friday. Holy moly, I'm gonna crack that hour mark, but I think I'm gonna just miss it. Yay for me. All right, friends, that is what I've got. Floss Tube Friday. Happy stitching. Happy weekend. Happy shopping. Happy wrapping. Happy doing all the things. I love coming back and just randomly rambling with you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I'll be back at some point next week, at least for Floss Tube Friday. Maybe. Maybe some plans. Please to goodness, the Project Keeper release. But at some point, sometime. I don't know. All right, friends, happy stitching.